MCU's 2018 hit film Black Panther generated close to $1.4 billion in revenue worldwide. An entire world movement seemed mobilized around that film, and its star, Chadwick Boseman, achieved instant icon status despite his unexpected and sad death that occurred two years later. The character of T'Challa spoke to the audience as the king of the previously unknown yet incredibly advanced African country, Wakanda whose father was ruthlessly killed by a supervillain. The young prince and heir to his father's throne takes on the responsibility to lead his people. But the one thing that people ask is, where did the character come from? Well, it all goes back to the comic books and a creative team of two comic book legends. Stan Lee, editor of the Marvel Comics Group, and Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby's superhero creations are so numerous even he can't keep track. The year was 1966, and civil rights was gaining real steam, with the Black Panther Party that premiered the same year. So it's based on that, right? It's close if you look at the timelines for both, but no, there was no way that was a crossover. The Geek Boys, you know, they don't like coincidences. And that's true. The Black Panther hit the stands April 1966, six whole months before the Black Panther Party was formed. That doesn't make sense. Although it was still a brave decision by the co-creators Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, and especially brave of the publisher Martin Goodman, who did add a more concealing mask on the black hero to hedge his bets. But wait a minute. <coughs> if it's not based on that, then what's it based on? Well, it depends who you ask. Well, Stan Lee said in 2011 that he based the Black Panther from an animal helper to a magazine adventure. But when you ask Jack Kirby's family, the character was actually based on one of his rejected characters, the Coal Tiger. So, these two men combined these two ideas? Well, it turns out there was another Panther character before, the one that we know. It was actually by Marvel. It was for a Western comic by Stan Lee and Dick Ayers, a Caucasian bank robber who was dressed like a panther that was the villain of that story. Oh. So wait, does that mean that Stan pushed the panther idea and Kirby wanted to make him black? Well, there might be more to it. Well, the publisher Martin Goodman was always poaching Golden Age trademarks. He did the same with Daredevil, Quicksilver, and Captain Marvel. So there's a chance he did something similar with the Black Panther. <laughs> By artist Paul Wheelahan from Australia, who had a sidekick in the same way that Stan described in that Alter Ego magazine in 2011. So that means the publisher asked Stan, the editor, to use the name. Thank you. Bye-bye. It's very possible that either the publisher, Martin Goodman, or Stanley, the editor, may have been eyeing the competition. So, that's the end of the story, right? Well, not exactly. <laughs> there was a comic strip artist, Bob Lovers, who drew Tarzan, and he depicted the evil Black Panther tribe in Africa. Not exactly a celebrated depiction because of the racial stereotypes, but it does function as a Black Panther tribe precursor to the one that we know. Well, this feels like a rabbit hole. What's up? Anything else with the Panther name in comics? Well, now that you mention it, yeah. Bob Lovers was working at Centaur Comics, and there was another artist there, Paul Gustafson, who worked on an actual Black Panther superhero in 1941. It's very likely he may have seen that character, Caucasian, in a black leotard. He probably had more in common with male strippers than he did the later Panther characters. It is possible that Martin Goodman wanted to secure that trademark since that company was defunct by 1966. Well, fine. But there's more to the Black Panther story. What about his backstory as the Prince of Wakanda? Well, that wasn't the first time Marvel used that story. Wait, so it's recycled? Well, a Hollywood writer who uh, used to work at Marvel back when it was called Atlas wrote a very similar story about Waku, Prince of Bantu, in 1954 by Don Rico. <laughs> But 
what about the coal tiger? How does that factor in? Well, the coal tiger was likely an original pitch from Jack Kirby. This character had no mask. There was no shame about the race. He was noble and proud. Probably it was the publisher, Martin Goodman, wanted to secure a golden age trademark. They had this rejected coal tiger character from Jack Kirby. They probably refashioned it after the previous Panther character in the Western, also using that old story by Don Rico. There you have it, the perfect storm at the perfect time, and the birth of a legend for the first black mainstream superhero in comic books, making his way through the years as an eventual blockbuster property of Marvel Comics, a company that formed an undeniable and rebellious identity back in the 1960s. 